Greetings and um, thank you for this opportunity to come to you this week and, spe- uh, and share the Word of God and spend this time with you in prayer. This week is leading up to Christmas Day and so many of us are turning our minds and thoughts towards Christmas, perhaps already there. And uh, not only are we in that mood or that season of Christmas, but in many ways we are drawn to think about the whole meaning of Christmas and the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ came into this world about 2,000 years ago. So keeping in line with that, we want to take some time each day of this week to think about this truth that God became a man. And that is what we are celebrating uh, around this Christmas season. And we want to just draw some insights or point us to some important insights. Today we want to ponder on the fact that when God became a man, there was miraculous conception involved. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14, the prophet Isaiah foretold almost 800 years, 750 to about 800 years before the Lord Jesus was born. He said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He said, A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And that is something unheard of. It is something completely unexpected for a virgin to conceive and bear a son. He also mentioned the name of this one who would be born in this unusual, miraculous manner. He said his name shall be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. So God becoming a man, he came through a miraculous conception. A virgin will conceive and bear a son. Why was this so important? There are several theological or biblical insights that we can point to. First of all, the one who was going to be the savior of the world, the only one who could be the savior of the world was God himself. And God had to come as a man. And this God who became man was not born of Adam in the sense he was not of Adam's fallen lineage. This was someone who was divine. It was God himself embodied in human form. And this person who was going to be the savior of the world, which is God himself, he had to be above sin. He had to be above Satan. And he had to be above death. Now, everyone born of Adam automatically came in subjection to sin, Satan, and death. And so the only one, or the only human, who could ever be born and yet be above sin, Satan, and death would be God in human form. And so in this miraculous conception, God was wrapping himself with humanity and isolating himself from the fall. This man, Emmanuel, God with us, was man, but he was man who was above sin, Satan, and death. He was not born of Adam's lineage in the sense of being in subjection to what Adam put us under. This is Emmanuel, the one God who became man. Let's pray together. Father, we worship you, O God. We exalt you that this God of this universe would construct this amazing, miraculous manner in which you, O God, would step into this world to be Emmanuel, God with us, the wisdom of God with us. Lord, we worship you, we honor you, and we thank you this Christmas season that you became a man. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in to Living Supernaturally. 
For more resources to strengthen your spiritual walk, please visit apcwo.org.